Peter Knopp invited Ron Moore and myself over to Germany uh, to bowl in this team tournament uh, because they do it a little different over there, and they have these kind of like levels they have to get to okay. in the league to get to the better league. You have to win your league to get to the better league, and you're allowed to bring in subs. And uh, Peter Knopp, sponsor, had Ron and I come over and bowl on their team, and fortunately, we got them to the next level. But uh, this threesome right here, Ron, myself, and Peter have bowled together for quite a while. Oh, that's, a, that's a really, really great story. Quickly, P Peter Knopp, <laughs> Ron Moore here in the opening match, Gary Ray, and then John Chapman and M. Lota Monticelli. We've got a quick poll to start things off here this morning. Who do you think will bowl M. Lota for the title? Peter, Gary, Ron, or John? Pick your favorite there. And Who's your who pick? Maybe. Come on. I don't even pick against Ron. I mean, I, there, it, I'd love to see Peter there, but how can you pick against Ron Moore? Ron Moore has been on fire. Ron Moore, is, his focus and his intensity is just incredible. And when he gets in this format, he's fantastic. But, you know, Peter, I, I got to go with Peter. I, I, I just, I do. And it, I'm, I'm going to take two picks. <laughs> Just pick four then. <laughs> no. You know, my boy's Peter, but I got to go with Amleto, too, to win. Well, yeah, this is just who's going to bowl Amleto for the title. We're not picking the winner yet. but and, and also, the one to watch out for that I think the wild card here is Gary Ray. He's had a solid-looking match play all day. The only lefty on here. He's got that side to himself. It's just it's Yeah, just, he's the he one that knocked me out, and he, he's got a great look. I mean, he's got, he's got some boards to hit. Uh, as long as he doesn't, he has the ability to overthrow it. And if he doesn't do that and, and keeps his rhythm, he's going to be tough to beat. Oh, just a horrible break for Peter there. Starts out with a double and then the old 7-10. And there was not as many as we saw last week, but there were still quite a few 7-10s here this week. The pattern, even though it's the Mike Albee 39-foot, uh, I, I left a couple of those. And... When you really thought the ball was going to turn, there's just enough friction down the lane to make it stop. And when it stops, it doesn't continue. Actually, Gary Ray, to the right of me in a match, left the 5 7 10. I think you guys had that again. Oh, I didn't catch that, did he really? Yeah, he left oh, it. I missed and, that. And as many revs as that guy puts on a ball, it's right. basically we'd think impossible for that to happen. And we got a lane stuck. I think that's called a 270, where the machine gets stuck uh, in the middle of a cycle, something like that, if I remember from my old days of working back there. It's only been about 30 years. Well, if you remember, you could go back there and help them. I could just keep pushing buttons and hope something happens. <laughs> <laughs> but getting reset looks like no problem. Well, at least the tournament today, we didn't have any hiccups. We didn't have any power outages. Shh. There's no storms coming through. and I'm, I'm going to slap you, Tom. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I know well, you've told we, everybody. We did, we did have 23 and 24 that the scoring went out today. Well, well, we had ball returns yesterday after that brief lightning strike. We knocked out two relays. I mean, what a heck of a tournament we've had. Finishing up at midnight last night. But uh, you know what? We're going to make it. Final one of the year has been a challenge. Ron Moore, this guy that usually capitalizes on an opening, and that one uh, checked up on a little bit high. A little slow maybe, you think? Well, it says 14-4. It looked a little slow, but Ron has got that hook set. At least that's what I call it. You see the ball make that. He's got the old Amleto. Yeah, defined move, and it sets to the pocket. And when he, that's what makes him so hard to beat because if you can get hook set, the ball really never goes high once you get lined up. It just sets to the hole. As you said, Amoletto made a career out of it. It's always fun to watch Ron Ball. I love his passion. He, he's just always pumped up on every shot. And you know at 15 feet whether he likes that shot or not. I mean, he's he's got the body motions. You know, he'll start to walk a little bit left when he wants the ball to tip up a little bit. And then gets that arm going and helps it through the pocket. You uh, you know if it's a good shot or not with, with Ron Bowling. 
Well, his mental focus is incredible. He, he, being an air traffic controller, I can't even imagine the stress of that job. No. And, you know, I if you're bringing planes in, landing planes, and having them take off, obviously your focus is pretty intense. And when he gets set up, it's just like clear the mechanism. I don't think there's anything going on. As long as there's no distractions around, he's just dead on. Yeah, that shot was dead flush off his hand. He started walking immediately. All right, see how Peter responds to that 7-10. Just a tough break. That was about 16, and that never got right. He got away with one of those against Ron in game two, and then well, Ron just he's got to settle gave down. it to him after that. When I was down there talking to him, I said, Peter, you got to post the shots. He tends to run and throw it when he gets amped up. He's got to post it. Peter started out with a double, had the 7-10. Now he's got this 9-pin. and We got Ron going strike, spare strike, your spare strike. For you people at home, you can't see the scores, so I don't think. We'll have them. Yeah, we, we pop them up and down. There they are. There you go. Like any of us, he wants this so bad he can taste it. You uh, you kind of know what that tastes like after last week, don't you? Yeah, and I was hoping to make two shows in a row, but uh, I, well, Gary Ray took me out, and he took out Wayne Webb huh. before. Yeah. Like I said, eviction notice on Gary's motorhome tonight <laughs> 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 for knocking both you guys out. We're here. flattening his tires. <laughs> yeah, he's done. Oh, uh, there you go. All right, a little light pocket hit, but they all fell down. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, Gary Ray actually is uh, part of the uh, the crew that lives here at the at the center with, you know, Tom Carter and and Wayne Webb. They all have their motorhomes outside, and uh, they they live yeah. here at the center. So yeah, that's Wayne what we're joking about. He, he, he invited Gary over, and Gary actually works here. He's been here a couple months now. He uh, he is like the fix it of everything. So he's been doing an incredible job at cleaning up the place, cl and trimming trees, the parking lot, working on machines and lights. And he's been doing everything. And obviously he's been doing everything on the lane. He's kicking everybody's butt. <laughs> that was inside of target again. This, this right lane, two shots back to back. He missed in. In my opinion, in this center, since this is home center for me, lanes 23 to 28 are the toughest pairs in the house. Right in front of the counter. So they get a lot of play. And we're right in front of the door. Uh -oh. That was not a good release. Oh, wow. That looked like he cut that way short. Wow. Looks like he dropped it even. You know, I've, I've talked to Ron several times through the years. You know, we've got to interview him several times with wins, but even off the lanes. And he had a great story. You know, he's air traffic controller up in Alaska. And he was actually working 9-11. And when it all went down, they didn't really understand, you know, at first, like, what, what's going on? And then they get the call that says, hey, land every single plane on your radar immediately. So he, he was telling me, I forget the number, it's thousands and thousands of planes that oh, they all had to coordinate across the country to get them on the ground, you know. And they knocked it out, all, you know, in no time. But that's, it's, 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 if you get a chance to ask him that story, it's fascinating. That's got to be crazy trying to get planes on the ground. And they're, I mean, I'm, I think pretty much everybody's seen – the uh, air traffic control and through the news, they show how many planes are up there at one period oh, yeah, of time. Oh, my God. How do you get all those planes on well, the ground? And then they said the problem was once they got them on the ground, because they, they just, you know, hey, get down as quick as you can wherever you are, right? Right. Well, so they landed some like his airport, I think it was in Anchorage, that couldn't take off because it wasn't big enough runway. Oh. So now you got planes all over the country that are too big to actually take off again. So I forget how they got through all that. But just an amazing job that those guys did and have done and I, do. I can't even, I mean, I can't, I have enough focus problems. I can't even think about imagining what it takes to be an air traffic controller to land planes, to have all those people's lives in your hands. I think it's there's a movie called Pushing Tin that uh, is about that, and it's, it's <coughs> unbelievable. Stress level off the charts. 
All right, that looks a little better. And no, that same thing. He, he got around it, but I thought it pushed for him. It didn't. No, it didn't. He, what's, he, he, what's he throwing? He's throwing a Paragon hybrid, okay. pin up, mass out. He's got just a touch of surface on it, like 2,000. Nothing major. Uh, but what happens with this pattern? The middling goes away so fast, it forces you to want to go left. But if you go left, you get create hang down lane. And the ball burns up so quick, you lose carry. No, he was throwing a, a, what a GB4 in the last match, wasn't he? Something red. I thought it might have been a GB4. No, that was a speed. Oh. Columbia speed. Okay. Didn't like the look on this pair? It, it actually, it burned up so bad wow, that, looked really, that really good. It, it didn't react at all down lane. Okay. I'll look at this. Show. Let's see where it hits at the arrows. That's about 16 to Eight, eight, nine. Yeah, yep. eight, yeah. Okay, let's see so if he hits Peter, that again. Peter fighting back. He spares the fourth, but he's got a three bagger now in the fifth, sixth, seventh. He's putting some pressure on Ron. And he got outside. Wow, I didn't that think I was going to make it back. No, it made it back, but it just stopped. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing left, right? Right yep. on steam. And that's what you, when you guys talk about retaining energy, that ball had nothing, right? Just well, and, and the big thing, then, the biggest difference, you look it up there at the speed. Peter threw hit that last shot 17-1, and Ron's throwing 14-6. And, and I can relate to the 14-6. <laughs> when? Every shot. Oh, <laughs> hey, well. I had some 15s. Come on. Okay, all right, all right, I'll give it to you. I'll be nice to you since that's our last show of the year. This is our I'll last. I'll try to be nice to you. This is tough. This is our last show of the PBA 50 Tour. It's been a great season. It's always fun sitting next to you, Tom. To your right, we've done this. I don't even know how many times now through the years. No. 40, 50. Yeah, a bunch. Yeah. Ron throwing a polished up phase two. That was 16 to about six. But Ron is so up the back of the ball. That's why he gets it to hook set. I mean, and that's one of the hardest things to do is stay up the back of the ball for that long. I mean, it's just naturally you want to get your hand around it to see the ball do something. Possible uh, Park, 220. Parker's got the lead. That's Parker. Parker. Yeah, who? I'm used to saying Parker all year. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Peter's I mean, got uh, the lead here. Parker's won a lot of tournaments, but mm -hmm. he's not here. Well, it's still like his chances. <laughs> I thought it's been a long season. <laughs> Ron Moore with a possible 228. If he could strike out. 244 for. Oh, trips to four. And it is nice. <laughs> I, it, it nice. We actually color coordinated today, too, with the, with the blue. So we, we yeah, did okay there. That. Yeah, I like that. You know, Peter throwing 16-9. He threw the last one over there, 17-1. That was a big shot there, tripping that four, though. I mean, he's now sitting on, what, one, you know, 164 and a separate with another strike. That puts him up, what, 20, 26 pins? Uh, I mean, if he strikes here, Ron can't shut him out. He can shoot 254. That was just a bit inside. You got it to hold, though. You got it to hold. Got it to hold. 17-3. That's why you got it to hold. Well, the biggest thing, and Peter has an advantage if the lanes dry out, because where he bowls at, they don't have a lot of oil. And he's used to throwing it hard, and he can keep it on line. And if he creates, for him, a little bit of oil is a lot of hold. And if he can find that spot, he's going to be tough. So where is he looking for room on lane? He likes it down lane where he can just throw it hard to that spot? Exactly. Okay. That looks a little inside again. Oh, trips out to 4-7. Look at this one more time. Unless he made a move on purpose. That crossed like 17 yeah. and yeah, 8. Yeah, and he was like 16 to 6 his last shot. Well, if he strikes out, he forces Peter to mark. 
Walker Peter can't do anything stupid in a tenth. That was firm. I don't think there was any question about that shot. No. <laughs> that was pretty solid. Well, I just take that seven ten away, and uh, Peter's throwing a. I mean, that was, that was still in the pocket, right? Just a little, little behind the head pin, but pretty solid game he's putting up here. Yeah, literally the biggest match is getting past Ron Moore because he's been so tough when it comes to match play on the show. Could be high. Yep. The trips to four and the nine. Wow. Now, what kind of break wow. is that? It That's looked like. Hall of Fame carry. The, the four was going to knock it down, but something else, the six pin came over and hit it from the other side. So possible 228 for uh, Ron Moore. That, that forces Peter to mark? No. Exactly. Or what his heart rate is right about now. He's looking pretty calm down there. About 160. <laughs> it's it's got to be up there. I know, Peter. <laughs> that was a good shot. Those last five shots of Ron Moore were pretty pristine. It's a little trip 4-9, which was huge. It was... Uh, Really trying to get it right in the pocket there, though. And knowing Ron like we do, he's 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 not happy about that trip four nine, but he'll, he'll take it. I mean, you, you don't have a choice, but he's he's thinking that shouldn't have struck. He knows I, it shouldn't have struck. I think he's more upset about the shot in the seventh, which would have given him a six back. Right. He's a very very hard on himself. All right, here's your chance, Peter. Winner gets Gary Ray. The lone lefty on the show. That's either really good or really bad. Come on, Peter. What a shot. He knew it off his hand, too. Did you hear that? I don't even think the ball had touched the lane yet. Yeah. And he knew it was there. That's great. Good stuff, Peter. Peter is wound up like an 8-day clock right now. <laughs> He's not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> he told us you're kicking him out of the motorhome early because you, you got you to gotta take it in for work. and He's probably not going to sleep tonight now. He's, he's He'll be wild. up all night long. Yeah. yeah. I'm kicking him over to a Wayne's motorhome. He threw that one 17-3. That was a little amped up on that one, 17-5. Yeah. Yeah. It's 17-5. They're I mean, getting faster. Only two tenths, but you can definitely tell that was. Uh, so Peter's going to move on to bowl Gary Ray. Our next match, Gary making his very first show. At, at any level. At any level, right. exactly. <laughs> so, here's the scenario. Peter's heart rate went up. He wins the match. Hopefully, he doesn't come down too low, like after shooting 300, you know? Sure. And, and he keeps that focus going because he's going to have a tough opponent in Gary Ray because Gary's got a great shot to the pocket. Great ball on Ron Moore. So what do you what do you expect we're going to see out of Gary? Do you need to go down there and talk to him? Is he, is he one of your staffers? He's not on staff, but he throws okay. our stuff. So I, uh, we'll go down and talk to him, see if we can get, keep him cool and lined up. I will tell you, when I watched him practice nearly, he was on that purple hammer, and he didn't throw it the last couple of matches. He was pretty well locked right in with that attitude. So yeah, he's been throwing if two. If he throws a purple hammer, take it away. <laughs> he's been throwing two different attitudes, one pin up, one pin down with some surface on him. 
around 500 and has had a great look. So I'm going to step down and talk right. to him, and we'll be back. We'll hold on to Ford up here. All right. Tom Carter, ladies and gentlemen, is going to go down and do his job as uh, his Brunswick ball wrap here. As Gary Ray gets eight shots, any combination, he can take seven on one lane, eight on one lane if he wants, or any on the other. But he's throwing the ball really well today. He's had a really good look. And I, I, I don't expect him to to falter. It's just a matter of who's going to get the breaks, who's going to carry. And as we know, on Bowl TV, Joe Winters, anything can happen. You know it. Brian knows it. Brian Kane in the booth with us also. Running the show tonight, keeping the boat afloat for just uh, another another 90 minutes. So this is going to be match two. Peter Knopp beats Ron Moore 242-28. We've got Gary Ray. The winner of this match will get Canadian John Chapman in the semifinals. And then our tournament leader, Amoto Monticelli, will be bowling for the title here in Columbus. Gary's been able to be aggressive all day long. Can stay firm with it. But as Tom said, he's just got to be careful not to, not to throw it past the break point or through the break point. Peter gets to just throw a few shots to stay loose over there. Doesn't get any 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 uh, practice on the championship pair. So he's not trying to strike. He's just trying to keep the body loose, control that heart rate a little bit. There will not be website updates tonight for PBA.com. So you all just have to watch the show right here live on Bowl TV and root your favorite player on. A group of fans here. we got a couple reporters. we got George Wooten from Bowlers Journal in the house. Always good to see George. A couple local guys from Columbus and other Ohio paper, I believe, also down here talking to the players. Wayne Webb does it right. Feeding the bowlers every night. Put on big spreads both evenings, or I guess early this morning um, with our late finish yesterday. That's what I've always admired out of these ball reps, though. So, I mean, we've talked at length. And I think most of you know the friendship that, that Tom and Peter have. Uh, but you know what? It's Tom's job or Kelly's job or, or whoever the other reps are out here. You know, if you've got Del Ballard or Jeff Johnson, they just need to go down there and help each player make the best choices for their game. Can't play favorites. And who doesn't like hearing the soothing voice of John Weber, tournament director? Gary Ray is going to start. Start on left lane. Match two here in Columbus. PB60 Tristan Taps Memorial. Gary Ray, Peter Knopp. Rod, I don't know for sure. They're just having some troubles getting the uploads. You know, it's been a challenging weekend, as you're well aware. And let's just add one to the list. First shot for Gary Ray. Yeah, it's just a matter of if, if he's going to carry. He's not going to. I don't see him missing the pocket. But will he carry is the question.
He didn't write down Gary's final score, but he was at 556 after 456, excuse me, after two against Tom Carter and, and Tom. They both started out good last game, so I'm pretty sure Gary shot a little 700 the last set. So you know he's he's striking. Let's see if that first match settled Peter down. Well, he took a lot of time in the approach there, Tom. A lot of time. That's usually That's what happens. <laughs> too much time. Yeah. Yeah. So I just mentioned in, before you got back that I, I don't see Gary missing the pocket this game, but it's just a matter if he's going to kick corners. Yeah. Well, the biggest thing about Gary – he can throw it 100 just like uh, Peter can. And if he swings it too much, there is a little bit of an out of bounds. And then the ball's not going to make it. And then that starts messing with your head. I remember, Peter had an early open uh, split against Ron Moore and still came back. So it's, you know, it's frame one. It's early. It, it's early. As long as the heart rate stays down and they breathe, it'll be okay. Both players, since they're this is the first show for both of them uh, at any level. Uh, I mean, Peter's won in different co countries, but I don't know if it's been on TV or not. And I, well, I think some of it has. Uh, well, let's talk about that. You got, we haven't had a chance to really talk about last week. You made your first show on a broadcast here. What was going through your mind? I mean, wh how did you handle it? Well, the, the being on the show really, uh, I didn't even think about that part. Uh, I guess some people do. I, I was more worried about actually executing shots, and unfortunately, uh, I didn't. I, the heart rate might have been up, I, but I. And this is strange. I didn't feel that pressure. I just didn't execute as well as I should have. I at the end of the of the match, uh, I kind of found something. I knew the lanes were going to get kind of torched up on me. That was a tough pair to begin with, 53-54. Uh, and, and I was trying to figure out how to figure out to get the ball through the part, mid part of the lane because for me, everything, with my speed being slower, everything hooked so early. And I just, I was fighting more with that in my head than anything else. So the, I, I can't, I can honestly say uh, being on the show uh, didn't bother me. And when I f actually made my first show, we didn't even have a show. Because we didn't uh, have was, TV back there then. There was barely electricity. It was still pinboys, wasn't it? Exactly. Well, then we were keeping counting stones. I told you I was, tr I, I was going to do my best to be nice to you today. So. Okay. But you, that, was, that was too easy. Do you realize? <laughs> that was too easy. In two days, the 24th, I'll be 66. I mean, I'm old. You said it. That's okay. But compared to these guys out here, that's that's just uh, that's just middle aged, right? I mean, this is the sixty uh, tour. We have how well many seventies this, this week? Well, you know, we ha we had, uh, you know, I need to ask my wife. Cause I I don't know, but we had several seventy. Johnny Petragli got a check. Uh, Ron Prophet got a check, and I know there was several more seventies, which was was pretty cool. We put up uh, money for uh, the seventy year olds, just like the the PBA fifty. There's checks for the super seniors, the guys mm -hmm. 60 and over. Well, this is a 60 tour. We felt it only right that some of the 70s should get checks, and we put up some money for those. <coughs> I know there was a list posted in the paddock, and every time I thought I'd go look at it, I'd get halfway there and but forgot well, there, what I was doing. Unfortunately, <laughs> there is no designation on, on that list who is 70. It they made a special a list. There was, it was up there at one point, but I forgot to look several times. There was? Yeah. I didn't see it. Yeah. There was a frog list? According, according to uh, Wonder Woman. I need to have a talk with her. It was a it was a need to know basis, and you didn't you didn't need to know. That's been my whole life story. Well, back to back seven pins for Gary. Oof! And what did you say Is about five, seven, ten earlier? Yes, yeah, he's he's starting to get amped up. That was nineteen one. Yeah, th that's yeah, getting that's a little bit too fast. He's got to slow down. He's throwing it way too hard. And that's what happens. He's got – Gary is so smooth. And you see the roll on the ball is just incredible. And he's got this long Marshall Holman slide. Hey, Gary's a good player. But 
heart rate has <laughs> got to slow down. I think his brother told me he's 64. Yeah, I believe. He used to be a power lifter at one time. Okay. He's strong as a ox. Well, you know, and, and if you watch him throw the ball like we're doing, you know, especially the last few days, I think we'd be shocked to think this is his first show because he throws a phenomenal. Oh, he does throw I phenomenal. I mean, he's got the speed. He's got a rev rate, you know, which was well above average. Oh, for well the tour. above average. And, and it, for especially somebody in their 60s. You know? And he just hasn't been out here. I mean, he's bowled tournaments. He's been, you know, he's been living out in Arizona, and now they sold their house. They moved back here. Uh so a lot of people probably don't know Gary. I've known Gary for probably 10 years. And he, he's just got a natural, smooth game. It's just incredible. He stood there a long time again. That is the shot that you don't want to see when you get it out and it burns up and doesn't make that turn. Th then you start things, weird things start going through your head. Do I need to move right? Right. Because if I move right, it's going to hook early. Do I stay where I'm at and try to get around it more? Do I slow it up? Do I change balls? I mean, how many? There's only about nine zillion possibilities. Well, move a change from the right pocket to the left. Tie your left shoe tighter. Right. Clean your glasses. <laughs> untuck your shirt, and then do all the above. Not an easy spare in this pattern either. No, because there is a hang spot. And that barely took out the eight. It, it got to the the two pin, but it just barely. If you watch it, go like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I both of these players right now just got to. We need a commercial break. They need to settle down. Well, don't they in Germany take a break halfway through for a, for a beer? <laughs> <laughs> Peter would probably prefer a shot of whiskey. I know a guy. I know you want a glass of wine. Just grape juice. All right, that's better for Peter. Much better off his hand. That no, ball, that no, ball, no. That ball hooked on him, but that looked much. I mean, it was a more aggressive shot. Okay. Right? He wasn't tentative. If, do we get a replay? Because I'm going to point out something. Where's the truck? No, we missed it. That's all right. He, d he didn't get it. What did you see? I seen his elbow come around the ball. Okay. Uh, his elbow flew to the right, and that ball just checked up early. That's the biggest thing about Peter that he gets aggressive because his wrist is so stiff. He never lets his wrist kind of collapse and go through it where you can straighten your arm. His arm is so tight. If you watch, now on his spare shots, he's good. But you watch on his first shot. You watch his elbow. And actually, if you watch him walk back there, you see how his elbow kind of, it's yeah. just the way he's built. Yeah. Okay. And if he lets that elbow get out, the ball checks up early. Still, uh, still pretty close. Yeah, it, it's pretty quiet here right now. Oh, oh. that one kicked the seven. Yeah, first guy to strike. Well, for everybody that had frame five in the first strike pool, you win. You would think, you know, Gary revs it up. And the only reason he wears that wrist brace, as strong as this guy is, he's just got a little bit of a weak wrist, and he wears it for support. And he's kind of been beat up. He's got pins and rods in his body. I mean, we're all pretty much all broken out here, but for a guy that's broken, he is pretty darn smooth. Does he have the metal supports in there, or is it just a leather wrist brace, do you know? Another seven pin. Uh, he's got the back metal support, not the front. Okay. Gary throwing at 18.9. That's three seven pins. So what do you think he needs to do to kick that corner out? He needs to slow, slow down. Just slow down, that's he's, it. He's getting too amped up. And the, 
He's throwing urethane. He's throwing an attitude control pin up. But he's got to give the ball time to read the lane. We talk about that all the time. If the ball doesn't slow down at the point of entry into the pocket, it never drives. It starts deflecting. So to me, that's a, that's a key thing you just, you just mentioned there for people at home. Um, Tom said the ball needs to slow down. It doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean you need to throw it slower, but mm -hmm. you need to get it to slow down. And usually with surface, right? Right. In, in, with surface, or you can do it w with your personal technique. But if the ball doesn't slow down, it deflects more. And you need it to, it loses traction going through the pins. You're knocking down 38 pounds worth of wood down there, for crying out loud. So you've got to get the ball to have traction going through the pins. Well, or 34 and a half pounds of wood. What are they, 3.4, 3.8? 3.8, yeah, 3.8. 3.8, 38 pounds, right? Oh, so yeah, I mean, that's why I subtracted oh, is that this, what you're saying? this pin, yeah. Oh, Did that math in my yeah, head. Yeah. Went right by me. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's all right. That's okay. <laughs> why didn't you help me with that, Brian? You're just going to sit over there and look like that, right? I mean, speed's a wonderful thing if you're rev rating. When, when I talked about the puddle, did we didn't, didn't I just say that about the puddle? Yeah. <laughs> that it doesn't want to go around the corner sometimes? Remember, he just shot that 2-8. And look, we saw how the ball didn't almost didn't want to hit the 8. So. And he just missed it. That is not a good thing. That's going to mess with him. And just a quick comment to Jim Pickering here. You know, Eugene McEwen still needs to get the ball to slow down. You can still throw it hard, but the ball must slow down to change direction, whether it's starting at 24 miles an hour or 14 miles an hour. But your rev rate has got to – it's like gears. Your rev rate and your speed got to match. If you have a high rev rate, Peter, what are you doing? Yeah, he's if you have a lost. high rev rate and you have high speed, it works. If one is more dominant than the other, it doesn't work at all. Then you're looking for the perfect condition to bowl on so you can score. Hey, Peter does need that timeout now. Yeah, he needs a timeout. Two missed shots in a row. Peter Knopf with 82 in the sixth. That when, when uh, sorry, uh, but when did you, when did you and Jeff know to talk to in the other bar reps? Know when to talk to your players in a situation like this? Do you wait for them to come to you, or is there time you walk down there and just grab them by the arms and you know how do you decide that? Well. If they will look at you, some players get in such a zone, they won't even look at you. And we don't just go out there on the, in the settee area where they're right. at and grab right. it. So if, if they look at you and want help, uh, we can help them. And we can kind of go, hey, hey, hey. And if they look at us, we can tell them something, you know. But it just, Peter hasn't even looked over. He yes. keeps looking at the score. And the more you look at the score, the more you get messed up. Again, mentally kicking himself. And all Gary's doing is filling frames. Our sound's good, everybody. Just uh, for everybody out there that's got some sound missing, just make sure you uh, you click the unmute button and turn it up on your whatever you're viewing on there. And the scores are going to pop up back and forth. They're not up there the whole time, so that's why you don't see them for the entire game. So 97 and fifth spare in the sixth for Gary Ray. 82 on an open in the sixth. So Gary's got a nice little lead here, but can he keep kicking out the corners? Because he's only done it once so far. That was a way like better shot. Yeah, Gary threw that one. Still 18-8. Just he's got to stick with it. I mean, he's putting some severe pressure on Peter. He's got a 30-pin lead on him, 35-pin lead with a strike up. Now, 
was inside. But you know what? It was that, that was so far was inside. <laughs> Peter wasn't having good luck on his side, so he decided to use the left side. <laughs> hey. <laughs> if it works, it works. And we are trying not to talk super loud because we're only – what, 10 feet from the players here. We're right on top of them. And there's yeah, not mean, a full center bowling, so. It, I mean, you know, that's why we're pausing as well as they're on the approach. Yeah, we're probably even closer than 10 feet when they're standing back here. Peter took no time at all to get back up on the approach there. He's rushing everything. Heart rate is out of this stratosphere right now. Well. Regardless of the result, it's still a solid finish for Peter. I know a couple weeks ago, Peter was pretty down. He just wasn't bowling good, wasn't knocking pins down. And then, now, you know, back-to-back -back weeks, he's bowled pretty good. Of course, now making a show this week. So, And unfortunately, uh, tomorrow mo well, tomorrow at 7.30, he flies back to Germany. <laughs> just you know, getting in the groove and just finally we getting kick him, him out. Then he's yeah. done. He'll be back. No matter what happens, he's had a great couple of weeks. I mean, he's cashed, I think, in almost every tournament since he's been over here in this Midwest swing. He's bowled really well. But bowling well and, and winning a title are obviously two different things. You want, you want that banner so bad. Yep. Gary with a big double there. Yeah, 17-3. Slowed it down, let it read. Better than 18-8. Well, Peter's max is 182. If Gary goes nine miss, nine miss, it's 182. So he just needs a mark in one of these next two frames. So I, I you got to believe his chances are pretty high of that happening. He's, he's not really missing the pocket. It's all over. Yep. Gary Ray is going to go on to meet John Chapman yeah, from we Canada. Don't, we don't know a lot about Chapman. I, I have heard from his buddies, though, that he's the former Team Canada. So he's got some, you know, some experience. be interesting to see if, if Peter, or, well, Peter's not going to get a chance to ball. I wonder if, you know, I mean, you know, Peter and John and, um, We've had several Canadians over here this year. You know, I'm sure they've they've met in competition across the country, oh, I, across I, the world. <laughs> we had several Canadians down here this whole swing on the senior tour. Mike Snow, S Snow was here. Chapman was here. Uh, oh, I'm going brain dead now. Uh, Con, Con Casey, Con yeah, last Casey. Week. Then we had J uh, James Kraft from Alaska, and we. Which is, you might as well call that Canada. Yeah, that's it's, the, it's cold up north. north of Canada. <laughs> yeah. And now Peter Sex, of course. I mean, he's, it's just, yeah. The arm swing's loose now. The pressure's gone because the match is over, unfortunately. Yeah, the heart you know rate. what? Finish strong. You know what? Punch out. Finish strong. When I threw the first strike in the tent to take out Tommy Baker, my wife, she's got AFib anyway. She goes, my heart rate was 140. <laughs> <laughs> so I know what Peter's going through. I may have mentioned that on the stream that you were uh, you were going to put her back in the hospital with the way that <laughs> match was going. Peter finishing it out. He picks us up 171. Possible 237 for G Gary Ray. Well, Gary's got a chance to throw a couple. Of, oh, and he's got three baggers. He's hitting the pocket now, carrying him, but why not throw a different ball in tenth? Free shots, right? Should. Well, he's got another red ball down there. At least try and see what it does. Oh, going to the uh, the one that got him here. At least for the first shot. Beautiful shot there for Gary Ray. I'll tell you, we're matching the different Canadians. In the 
I've well, seen I've seen Mike Snow's name for decades, right? I didn't know he was Canadian until last week because, you know, he bowls a ton of stuff in the Detroit area. So you see his name in the paper in a tournament. And here's Mike Snow, Mike Snow, Mike Snow. I didn't know he was Canadian until last week. <laughs> and Donnie Hogue is Canadian. Yeah. And he and actually made the senior Canadian team this year. And Bill Rowe, we had down here, Canadian this year. And they are both going to uh, – he told me it's not the Pan Am games, but they're, they're whatever, the, whatever the senior games are. For yeah, coming up. Uh, yeah. Coming up. So two twenty six with a spare for Gary Ray. All right, he's got he's got a win under his belt now. Yep. Well, congratulations to Gary Ray. He's one step up on the ladder, bowling the number two guy, Mr. Chapman. All right, we're going to take a little break. Ron, Ron. Tom's going to go down there and uh, talk to some players again, take care of business, do what he's got to do. Semifinal match. John Chapman, Gary Ray here. PBS 60, Tristan's Taps Memorial. Amlino will also get a couple of shots, so this will be a little bit longer intermission before the next match. I think Amlino gets four or six, as well as John's eight. So that's, you know, that's a full game on this pair, but Gary's a lefty, so it's not going to affect him at all. We'll be back in a couple minutes with the semifinal match here in Columbus, live on Bowl TV.
As promised, here we are. We're back. Semi-final match coming up here in just a few minutes. John Chapman gets his final practice shots in. Gary Ray's just going to stay loose. We'll run a practice pair, and here we are again, Tom. Um, we've got two games to go, and our season's over. John Weber's going to introduce our competitors here. Chapman will get choice. John Chapman, he's kind of sneaky because he played the lanes this whole week different than everybody else played them. Yes. Uh, he's got that unique release that allows him to stay a little farther right than a lot of the players. And because you know our title match with Amaletto, Amaletto's going to be left. He's not going to be playing right. So John's got a, a little sneak thing that he can do. Gary on the left side. So these last couple matches are going to be quite interesting to see the turnout. And I think it's just a matter of execution who can keep their mind calm. Speaking of being a little bit different, he's farther right than anybody we've seen play. Throwing a dark code. I didn't watch him. Little's practice shots. Was what was he throwing? A 3D offset. Okay, that's what he shot 802 and 804 with. That he ran out two rounds ago, or three rounds ago, uh, out of his car because he felt like he didn't have a look and pulls that thing out <laughs> and absolutely yeah. labels them. Well, I think somebody wishes he would have lost his car keys then because that <laughs> was, that was uh, quite a display he put on his last two matches there. Walt Blackston and, and Mike Snow. Mike Snow shot 8 15 in the opening match against, against Pete McCordick, and then he comes in two rounds later, and Amleto shoots 8 0 4 against him. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah you think you're bowling pretty good with an 8 15, and then the guy comes back and labels you with 8 4. So you were talking to Gary. What was the, some of the conversation you guys had during the break there? Exactly what he did right there 17.0. Slow it down. Get out of that 18 mile an hour zone. Let the ball read the lane so it can go through the pins. So for somebody as strong as Gary, though, what does he? How is? What's he do to slow it down? Slower it's legs. Feet. Slower legs. Okay. Ball speed is relative to foot speed, and since he's got such a long slide anyway, he has to slow that tempo down with his legs going to the line, so that his arm swing stays in pace with his legs. Obviously. The faster your feet go, the faster your arm wants to swing. You can see that ball pick up off the end of the pattern nicely. Yeah. Starts with a big double here. That was a little faster, a little mile an hour faster, but still red and did what it had to do. See that uh, six pin just chop the head of that ten pin out. That's why I say it didn't phase him one bit, did it? No, it, no. he's just sneaky good. And he's playing farther right. His hand kind of just goes around the ball. And the ball looks like it just hook sets early in the pattern. Yeah, it looked like it rolled out at 20 feet. Yeah. And then just got up and finished through the pocket nice. And he's got a long slide also. Both these players with very long slides. John wears that little uh, booty or whatever you call it there on a slide shoot him. Yeah, some consistent slide, but look how long that is. That one was left. Well, he didn't take any time at all on that shot. And you watch his hand; it just kind of actually goes around. It looks like he's waving at the pins when he gets uh, through with his follow through. That is a pretty interesting approach because he stands there, takes a look at what he's going to do, analyzes the lane. His fingers are already in the ball. Puts his thumb in and goes. It's not like puts his thumb in and gets set. His thumb goes in and he's moving. Everybody's got their own thing. Nothing's right, nothing's wrong. It all depends on what you can repeat. And John took out uh, Hall of Famer Brian Goble 
in uh, the match to get here. And, uh, with a pretty good set. He went 221, 279 the first two and pretty well wrapped it up. Gary Ray with a three-bagger looking pretty smooth right now. Getting that ball out to like three, four down lane. He's got some area to play with. If you got the right role and you create area, you're pretty tough to beat. That's kind of like Captain Obvious statement there, but <laughs> it's it's a fact. Uh, I concur. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> well, we had a first timer in in, uh, in Dave Johnson this year. Um, can no. Gary Ray uh, do the same? Don't start thinking, Gary. That's usually the worst ball in the bag is that one between the ears, isn't it? Yes. Gets you in trouble a lot. That's the one that has too many holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't put any plug in those ones either. <laughs> I like that he just stopped for a second there too, though. Didn't rush. Two four seven, kind of like our three six ten, which is what we always say. There's like a couple ways to pick it up and about nine hundred ways to miss it. Yeah, and he just missed it. I that's on this pattern, and maybe it was just I don't know the lane, the pattern, the oil, but for me to pick that up, I had to move three to four right where I normally stand to get that ball. To check the right way to pick that up. That ball didn't make the turn. Your good buddy Wayne Webb got me earlier. He left a three nine ten, and I set it up like you're just saying. You know, there's more ways to miss it than make it. You know, he can, you know, three ten miss to nine, take out three nine, all these things. What does he do? Takes out the nine ten. <laughs> like, okay, that's not usually the way that you would miss that three nine ten. But thanks, Wayne. <laughs> Well, you know, Hall of Famers look at things differently. <laughs> <Apparently. laughs> oh, that's in the gutter. Yep. And interesting, I talked about this earlier today, too. That was an opening that was the, unexpected. The, the ten pins that are missed this week have, I think, predominantly been to the right. It seems, I don't know why, but and there's not it's a ton of volume on this pattern. The ball just skates and just keeps going right. That's what I said about the 3-6-10 when yeah. I, I tried to. Normally, I stand on 25, and I look at 15, 16, and the ball floats back to the 3 six, ten. The first time I tried to shoot it in practice, it went straight to the 610. I went, what the heck? So I ended up moving three to four right with my feet looking at the same target and still barely hitting the three pin to pick up the 316. He made a ball change. That went to the gym. Much, yes, he did. Much stronger ball he, than the he dark went coat, to stronger more, cover. Yeah. And like you said, it's only a 39-foot pattern. You think there's going to be some friction, and the ball just kept backing up. Uh oh. What was the uh oh? You thought he got it too far uh, left, uh, didn't he? He sure did. He, he got that, a little, he got a little handful of that one, though. I thought that too. Look when at this. Because Gary's the guy that took me out in the previous round and in the round of eight. And there's uh, several shots I thought he got way too far left. Uh, and I go, okay, I got, I'm going to get a break here. And it come back flushed up. Yeah, I think with his body language, he might have felt maybe he missed that one too. But you know what? It struck, so let's throw another shot. That one's well. If he thought he got again. that one too far left, he did just he overcorrected. That's back to back two four sevens. And for what we just talked about with what was happening with the ten pins and, and the righties three six tens, I don't know if I'd throw plastic at this now after he missed it last time, but he's going to. Well, if he throws plastic, oh well. He better move left. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> you can keep your target the same, but I think you need to move your feet left. All right. Oh, that that wasn't 100% like I got that. That was only 22 miles an hour. Yeah, just sit here. You know, it, Here's what's amazing fact about Gary. For the longest time, he only threw the ball and couldn't get it any faster 
then around 14-7. Really? Didn't know how to use his legs. Nope. You are most correct. Yeah, I was wondering. That, that, uh, we've seen guys trying to use the bigger balls this week, and they just kind of burn up, and you're leaving those flat tens. I, unless you're really straight with not a lot of revs, I think that's the only way the bigger balls are going to work. Um, John chooses not to use a <laughs> – he's using a big ball for a 10-pin spare, but uh, – I seen most of the people around me and qualifying this week either were throwing hybrids or lane shine solids, nothing really dull, mm -hmm. dull. I know he's thrown this a few times. I don't know for how long. I mean, I've looked over a few times because this, you know, it's an easy ball to spot when it's going down the lane. But I don't know if he's thrown for full sets or full games and that one same thing. That just ball is quit. just that yeah. it's dead on arrival. If he doesn't do something quick, Gary's going to walk right through this match also. Chapman with 104 in the sixth and the bucket in the seventh. And that's definitely not the easiest yeah. thing. I didn't expect that up. after the way we saw him starting off and the look he's had, you know, all week long. Well, he, he pulled just to the right of him. He, he had the front nine against uh, Brian Goble. Yeah, game two, 279. This game, Gary, does look to be doing a better job of just taking a little bit more time. Oh. Got to help that up a little bit, it looked like. I haven't got to rep right Well, this is the first time Gary's actually been out here, but getting to rep him and out on the lane. I'm not sure what his thought process is sometimes about what he thinks, and then he's giving away count. That's not a good thing. 130 in the seventh. Yeah, a strike, and Chapman's within uh, within six. Right. We've got a game all of a sudden. Mr. Snow from Canada is still here watching his teammate. Yeah. Looks inside again. He is tugging shots and got away with that. But he got away with it. But what's your thought process? Oh, he was right. Oh, oh, my God. Yeah. He was right off of his hand. And John sticking with his gem. Yeah, Gary Ray defeated Peter Knopp the last game, 226 to 171. And Peter defeated Ron Moore in the opening match, 240 to 228. Here we are in the semifinal now. John Chapman from Ontario, Canada. All right, got that one to finish a little bit better. Get the 10 out. And we got we got a game now. You know, it's a six-pin match with two two frames left. I got to give a shout out to Chuck Allen sitting back here. Uh got his first check last week, I believe it was. Oh, good for him. But the big thing about Chuck, he's got Parkinson's. No, no kidding. And he's out here every week competing. And he got a check last week, and I th the whole crew is so happy for him. So congratulations to Chuck Allen. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well done, Chuck. He's always walks by, says hello to us, says good morning. So it's uh, nice to have a great group of guys out here that we all get to spend the summer with. And uh, this is just an eight-pin short of a bucket. Back-to-back -back shots here on this left lane. At the ball, really didn't do nope. a whole lot of nothing. Well, a double there would have been huge for him, but Gary's got a chance to step up and kind of start. Them out. You yeah. start shutting the door here. He can he can shut them all right here. What's the max score? We got one ninety four. Two twenty. Two twenty. Yeah. Well, for Chapman, one ninety four. Yeah, two twenty for Gary. So. 
Yeah, strike here does it. I strike can't believe mark, right? I can't yeah. believe he's pulling with a rack down because you don't know what that's going to do. So obviously Gary doesn't see uh, yeah, didn't anything. Didn't see it. Didn't see it, and I would have never ever threw that shot. But that's good concentration. I mean, if if he didn't notice anything, that was. So 150, 170, at this rate it's 190. Now John can step up and strike out and put some pressure on. Well, Gary's still got a chance to get up here in the 10th and, and lock it up, right? Still 194 max for John. And Gary can shoot, what, 200? 10. Get the yeah. score here in a second. Get those graphics off of there. Now we got a that. we got Deadwood. We got a rack down. Yeah. Gary's going to throw. So double and five. And Gary will unload a Monticelli for the title. Anything less, Chapman will have a chance to get up and win it in the tenth on his better lane of the two. Gary needs double and five. First shot. Spectators here have been doing a great job oh. of staying quiet. And he, that was, he gassed that one, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, 19-1. Yep. <laughs> So, best he can do now is 187. It is, uh oh, pin swept, racks going nuts. We got to change lanes. No, move the cameras. No, no. no. <laughs> just, just pack everything in you up into you, go and go home. I think Brian forgot to put gas in again. That's only sure we're going to make it to the gas station this week. I think he's been running on fumes. Gary's really? got ball in hand. He's he's ready. You can, yeah. Gary, you need to wait till the pins are set, buddy. Got to throw it right through that sweep. It's hard to believe this is our last telecast this season. I'm sad. You tearing up a little bit? I'm, I'm tearing up. Yeah. Not it'll, good. It'll be okay. We all get to go spend some time with our families. I get to go to Red Bay. I got to get some motor homework done. So you sit on the beach for a little while, a couple of days? Beach in Red Bay, Alabama? There is no beach in Red Just Bay, Alabama. Just keep going farther south. <laughs> there isn't even a Red Bay in Red Bay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, again, Max for John Chapman now is 194, 187 here for Gary. So is count important as well? We've well, got to get at least seven, right? At least eight. At least eight to force a mark. Right, yeah, 184. Doing math out loud can be confusing at times for all of us. I mean, strike spare is 184, so get to at least 185. All right, 187. There we go. So he's forcing him to double. Yep. That's what I was trying to get to there. Is figure out what he had to do. He had to get at least one, but he's got a double here. He's got a double. And he struck the last time, flat he, 10. The shot before he, that. He, he took he a missed the 10 pin before that. So he's hit the pocket four times, um, twice with each ball, um, carried once with each, and ten pinned once with each. He needs this one. If it doesn't strike, it's over. Looked a little slower than the other ones, but all right, stayed right there. Okay, a great well, shot. You can't get the double unless you get the first one, right? So well, that's that, that's the, kind of the rule, I think. And what was that like? Eight to five ish, seven to five, eight to five. Like I said, he's playing a line nobody else played all week. This is the key right here. They go. He needs this shot to bowl for a title. 
That's left. That was, yeah, off that was his left hand. all the way, but he kind of flattened it out. Oh, like my hand. God. That held. Are you kidding me? Shim to win. Yeah, look at the release, though. He, it, it came off his hand a lot different, so it stayed right there. But, yeah, that was definitely That's inside. that hand going around it where I said he waves yeah. it. Yeah. It's not like he overlifts it. The ball just held. Oh, my gosh. He's four. It doesn't make it. He's got four. Well, just with those there long slides, make sure you stay behind that fall line. 194 to 187. Nice run for Gary Ray. John Chapman bowling for his first senior PBA 60 title against Hall of Famer Amaletto Monticello. I will be back in a few. I'm going to go down and talk to Amaletto and All see right. what's going on. Sounds good, Tom. Thanks. Keep it up. And uh, you know what time it is now? We're getting ready for this championship match, so I think I think Brian, it's got to be about time for a, a giveaway here. Get ready. Coming up on your screen here in just a few seconds, the countdown will begin. And when that uh, that box comes up, what color is it today? Is it still yellow? I haven't been paying attention. But get ready for the giveaway. Minimize your screens. Giveaway's coming. Don't want, don't want anybody to miss it. Yeah, 58 seconds to get ready. I know it's going to be tough if he can still throw that ball. Remember, he shot 804, 802 his last two match play rounds here today um, with with this ball. His only two rounds in match play, so he's averaging, uh, somebody do the math on that one, 16.04 divided by six. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay, he's averaging 267.3333. Got that 3D offset was the first shot. And I'm going to guess that's a stealth with a little little lane shine, maybe a little polish to it. That looked pretty good, too. I like the way that ball went through the pins a little better. It'll be interesting to hear the conversation that Tom has with him. But he gets, uh, he gets several ch chances at this, or practice shots, excuse me, on this final pair. So he can try a couple different things. Yeah, that's a stealth was the second shot. Either. So hit that little yellow button there, submit entry. Take your chance uh, to win a prize here on Bowl TV in our final broadcasts on the PBA 50 slash 60 season for 2022. There's more events coming up. Just click that information tab, hit Bowl TV schedule. You'll see that coming up in October, collegiate events kick off Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, Midwest Collegiate Championship. Wichita, Marietta, Georgia, Millsboro, Delaware, Fairview Heights, and then the Glenn Carlson Collegiate Shootout before Christmas in Las Vegas. Of course, not on the schedule, but we'll be at the Ron Moore Senior Shootout in, uh, in November as well. So plenty of action coming up. And congratulations, Kim Nichols. A $10 e-card from Best Buy. Be curious to see what uh, what John Chapman does for ball selection here. He had a dark cold early, and then went to the gym. See, so, you now this pair hasn't had a lot of play on it, so that ball looked good for Chapman. Championship pair, and we were in the we've already had six game plus the practice, probably a good eight plus games on that lane.
Yeah, John talking to a couple guys back here. I want to stay in this pair, but this pair's got a little more oil. That's the difference. Ball's working good for him there. Leto still with a few more shots. Trying a third ball. So everything he's throwing is striking, but he's want to watch what the ball does going through the pins. He got a mitt full of that one. See that ball deflected and, uh, you know, was going a little bit maybe even right of the nine pin, so that's not the one he wants. That's that's not the shape he's looking for. I think that first stealth might be the one. I know they're pointing at the, at the 3D offset as well. Yeah, Chuck Allen down there talking with Tom and Emletta also. And to you as well, Neil. And you know, to all the Bowl TV community, we appreciate all your support out there. You know, there's some good comments and bad comments. We know you all got our back. We appreciate that. And it's been a fun summer out here on the PBA 50 Tour. It was fun to come out of retirement for a summer and join these guys. It was a year and a half almost since my last broadcast before the first event in Florida. Just like riding a bike. Brian Kane's been a great addition to our crew. First chance to work with Mike Flanagan this year. It was an absolute blast. And you know what? You never know where we might show up because anything can happen. But thank you to our community out there, all you Bull TV fans, for uh, playing along and tolerating our, our silliness at times. We were able to add Tom Atcock last week in the booth when uh, when Tom Carter was bowling. Of course, Tom Hess actually filled in for me in Vegas because I was in the middle of moving at the time, so thank you, Tom Hess. Of course, Emil Williams, Jr., part of our Bowl TV crew. And Chase Kaufman got a chance to, uh, to jump in with us at Westland at the at the final major of the season there. So we've had a, a nice group of guys fill in and help out. And of course, all the guests in the booth. Last couple of events have been tough to have guests because we've only had one squad, so there's no extra bowlers around. And a little shooter temp in. Oh, the old 8 9. Make him shoot it. Now we've got to meet a few of you fans at different events across the country as well, so that's always fun. And we've got to know some of these bowlers better. Final announcements here for John Weber. Ready for the championship match of the PBA 60 Pistons Taps Memorial here in Columbus. And it is none other than Leto Monticello coming on. And Leto is from Venezuela. He's now living in Lakeville, Florida. He's won 20 times with the PBA Tour. Ten championships on the PBA 50 Tour. Most of those are majors. He's also won the PBA Regional Tour. He's traveled the world giving clinics and lessons. PBA and USPC Hall of Famer. And Leno Monticelli, John Chapman. Well, it's not going to get easier for Chapman now. He's got one of the most decorated, beloved, famous bowlers on the planet, Leno well, Monticelli. Yeah. <laughs> and... and He's been bowling extremely well on this pattern. And, you know, again, like I asked earlier, you know, if, if these guys cross paths in international competition through the years. They have know, to. They're both under 60. They must have. Must they have. have to have. Must have. And Chapman was joking. He wanted to stay in this practice pair. Of course, if there's a little more oil there. He could get away with throwing a bigger ball. But now he's back on the pair here. He did not strike on that left lane with his ball. And, and he went Brooklyn. It went runaway. Amoletto. Could be throwing, and he is. He's going to be throwing two different stealths. Okay, that the second one was a stealth also. I saw you. Yes, Chuck one's Allen a four and a half inch there. pin. Okay. One is a five and a half inch pin. He had Chuck run and get the other one, the five and a half, a four and a half inch pin. So I think he's going to throw two different ones. He's been throwing that uh, 3D offset the whole right. tournament. Right, and averaging 267 with it. And had such a great look, but. Did at least on this pair, it almost looked like it was stopping, burning up too quick. 
which is kind of, but it's asymmetrical compared to the stealth being a strong symmetrical solid. First shot out of Amleto. Whoa. Oh my God. Just a bit outside. Well, not going to learn much off of that shot besides no. don't do that. Yeah, that, uh, I'm not sure quite, because yeah, he felt pretty good on, on the right lane. That's why he took an extra shot on the left lane. He, but uh, obviously the score doesn't look so good. Fairly easy spare for Amaletto. The one, two, four, the typically something you see him leave. Yeah, not uh, not too often. He hasn't missed a head pin well, since, what, 1986, maybe? <laughs> yeah, after shooting <laughs> 800 near. Yeah, just what, yeah. A, I mean, what an afternoon. 802, 804, his two matches yeah. today. Here's a guy that came out on tour, and they go, no way with that arm swing, that high back swing, that crooked elbow and the snap at the bottom is he ever going to last more than a couple years and here he is 60 years old and still doing it and what did John Weber just say 20 national titles 10 senior titles and the old high pocket 410 horrible break there PBA USBC Hall of Famer The five and a half inch pin is going to go longer down the lane for him, but it's going to give him more back end. And in practice, he had a great look with it. But now we're now the lights are on. And if you grab it a little bit, slow it up a little bit, it's going to change direction. He just, even though the ball he shot 800 with, he just didn't like in the practice. But you never know. This might be the time to go back to it because that didn't look like it worked too well. No, no, not at all. I mean, he can be more aggressive with the stealth, right? Well, I thought yeah. at first maybe try to take the OB out of play with the first shot and said, yeah, no. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what he does here in the third frame. Oh. Whoa. Wow, that, that, that moved. That'd that, that make your legs wiggle, too. That ball jumped an inch <laughs> off, the, yeah. off the, watch this. This, this pin he actually, hit nine. you can see air. Uh, we can't see it around, but you can hit. We saw air underneath that. Now, even. You talk about going at the pocket. He was nine at the arrows, 12 at the break point. That's pretty that, direct. You think? <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, but how does that ball not hit the eight pin? Well, it did hit it, I guess. How does it not knock it down when it's going that direct? I, I mean, that should be a nine pin, the, right? The rev rate didn't match it. For the key. It had to deflect. So he's. Looking at nine, swinging 12. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Or Amleto used to do that, but it was nine on the left side, <laughs> right, to, to 12. And that is, again, this gentleman played a part of the lane that nobody else played or could even play it the way he's doing it with a big ball. Do you think that had any effect on M. Little's ball choice? No, because M. Little's, what, 12 boards left of him. M. Little's standing on 25. He drifts left. He's crossing probably 18 out to 7. We'll get a good look here at the over the shoulder cam and see where this ball goes across the arrows in the tracer down lane. 18, 7. That's pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty close. I think it was more like 18.2 and 7.6. So, but, you know, really? I got a better look at that than you did. I'm off to the side a little more. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. I just call it like I see him. <laughs> look at that. That was a deep breath I might have just took there. He, he had mentioned to me earlier that 
his match play record here lately hasn't been worth a darn. He's been getting kind of beat up. And I think that could be in the back of his mind. He's he's going to make this for everything he's got. There you go. Oh, we even got stand-up messengers. Here's a guy at 60 years old who puts just a ton of hand in the ball. There's a, there's a few guys out there. We've talked a lot he, about uh, you know opens. Tom Adcock, check his ID. I'm Leto. Nobody's ever believed he's. He, I mean, we still he could pass for under 50 still. And when I bowled Adcock earlier, he gave me a free pass because I could have swore he's going to shoot 300 at me. Well, the way he bowled yesterday on the fresh, yeah, he he lit him up. But just uh, it's a new day today, and you got the best of him. I call him Clark Kent. He looks like Superman. He, he's built like Superman. Oh, big, strong guy. He he looks 40 years old. <laughs> it's not fair. Well, he did tell us in the booth last week that he just got his new ID from the Dominican, so it, is, <laughs> it does say 60. Chapman now looking for three in a row. Going to open up a little lead over Amleto. There's a high flush. Going to kick oh. the nine out with it? No. Doesn't get the Ron Moore carry on that one that we saw earlier. Just a nine pin. We've seen several trip four nines this week, though. You know, out on the PBA 50 tour, uh, a lot of guys, Chris Barnes, Tommy Hess, uh, those guys were throwing gems. But most of those look pretty much lane shine. They look like they right. had a little polish to them. John's looked pretty much out of the box. <laughs> Got a little, little scuff to it even. It's got some surface there, a little teeth on it. So and, and, uh, we do want to make sure that we uh, give a shout out to PBA 50 Rookie of the Year, Dino Castillo. Great first season out here for Dino. Picked up a win at the Senior Masters. And our PBA 50 Player of the Year, Parker Bone the third, who won at, at almost everything, it seemed like. Four wins. He, he was on the show every week. Fantastic season for Parker. And now our final event here of the season yeah. is a 60 event, and we've what got a, a Hall of Famer there. going for a title. Cool, calm, and collected. So John Chapman starting out with a strike. Spare, double, nine spare in the fifth. Amaletto, seven spare, had that split. Three bagger. What is going to be the score of this game? Give me a number. Mm. Come on. Two twenty-eight. I was going to say two twenty-six. So over under two twenty-seven. <laughs> 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 Where it's at, or you know what, I am going to just might strike out now. I mean, he's a guy when we see him make a move, start striking, he just does it for days. Yeah. I think he just found his comfort zone. Well, John Chapman, buckle up, because <laughs> here it he comes. Here comes the ride. Yeah. Where Kisi Medio Express has uh, arrived in Columbus here in this championship match. 89 and a fourth. Spare up for Chapman. And Leno is taking the lead now in this championship match. That ball never got the 12 down lane. That's what we saw on the right there on that the left is, lane a couple shots. Just that's doesn't get there. Amazing to me. And I'm sorry for interrupting you, but it, watching his ball roll was such a big ball in this pattern kind of starting it up and never turned the corner on the back end. I like his tempo. Just get up, get your thing and the go. You know, yeah. not taking a ton of time, not overthinking things, but just not just not getting the ball shaped that he needs right now. It's unfortunate because he's both great, you know, all week and all day. It, it, I like his tempo. I mean, he didn't take no he feet or set. Get up, go. fingers in, yep. rolls his thumb in. As soon as his thumb gets in, go. Drop down, go. I wish I could do that. I got too much crap going through my head. Strike up for John Chapman in the seventh. He's, uh, he's in trouble, though. 127 in the sixth. He's got a possible 247. 
Now the striking him is up 20 though. No, yeah, he's, he's still in the ball game, but he's going to yeah. need Emlett to give him a couple of opportunities. She's not singing yet. He was walking that one out because it looked great. Four nine. So he goes goes a little high for the four ten on the left lane earlier, and now four nine. Hey, that got out there. He's just like, it's well, look at where that ball went off the whoa. mid deck. Yeah. That found friction. A bunch of it. So he really needs to pick this up to stay in the in the lead. Oh, no, that was off his hand way yeah. too quick. Does Am Loto not normally throw a spare ball? No, he never throws a spare ball. Attention to, he doesn't throw spares very often today, so we haven't really had a chance to no, see that. He, he has the ability to flatten his wrist and throw it straight, but he missed that 141 in the seventh. Max score now 231. Yeah. Chapman gets the lead sitting on the bench. I'm a little taking just a little extra time. Got to reset. He threw that ball great. But the pins didn't think so. No. He threw that with a little bit of authority. Holy cow. A little frustration on that one. Yeah, I think so. 18-7. Uh, and that'll defeated Mike Snow and uh, Walt Blackston. 804 against Snow, 802 against Blackston. And uh, Mr. Chapman took out Brian Goble and John DeSantis here this afternoon to get to this final match. And Gary Ray in the semifinal. Nope. So we're talking about sneaky good, and I said that earlier. This is sneaky good. You're just thinking nobody's played that part of the lane. It's not going to work. That was 9 to, nine to 10. <laughs> it's Adam, any way you look. He gave that one a little bit more room. <laughs> not much. Inch and a half. like it at all. He's just thinking, give me anything. Oh, and that almost that turned into something beautiful. That could have been any number of combination leaves there. It could have been a big split. Could have been a 6'10". Could have been a 6'7'10". And it's just a 10-pin. And so now we come down to a two-frame game. You missed that 10-pin early, remember. 76, 96, 226 possible for John Chapman. He didn't right. miss this no, one. No, didn't miss that one. Amaletto, 231. Amaletto can seal the deal. Ball in hand, ninth and tenth. Well, if you pick a few guys in the history of uh, bowling to, to get up and double in the tenth, Amaletto makes that list every time, right? I would say yes. Got to get this one. Can't go anywhere without the first one. Uh-oh. That was it's in. in. Oh, my. In all of God's creation, I wouldn't have believed that th he would have thrown that Brooklyn. Well, does that, uh, does that make up for the 4-9, I guess? I mean, well. But that's, I mean, that's two shots. He luckily, he didn't have to throw another shot on that rear lane because that lane's hooking on him now, big time. Well, here's the thing. If he hadn't have struck there, even if he had marked, he couldn't have won. Right, right. Couldn't shut him out. Now he yeah. can. Yeah, because just... 96 to 16 for John if he just marks. He had to have that shot. Holy cow.
Now it's, he wants to give us more room. Oh, so no, that's that and again. That's left again. Wow. What? That's shocking. He just did it twice. He missed. I think he's I, even kind I, of puzzled I, by that. Yeah, I'm, reaction there. I'm, I don't even know what to say. That ball never had a chance. He spares us up 88-08. 96. Chapman just has to mark. Yep. He's got to make the spare, though. He's got to make the spare and strike. He just missed. Oh, my goodness. I think that is from wanting it so bad you couldn't let it go. And he... I don't even he needs, know. Uh, he needs what, nine to make a nine to force a strike or to force a mark here, right? In the right count. But yeah, just force a mark. And I don't see Chapman splitting. Not the line that he's playing. Well, I mean, he's not say all he needs is a mark, but it's for your first title against a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I'd but love yeah. that opportunity, he's, but it's not going to be easy. He's been on Team Canada. He's. He's bold under pressure situations. I know anything can happen, but my goodness. Well, he's broke up his split so far today where some of the other players haven't. So. Amaletta, 208 with a strike. He's got a hope for a miracle right here because I don't see John Chapman missing the pocket. Yeah, just a mark and good count. It's over. Oh, my God. 92. Got to make it. This is a big four. Yep. What did you just say? He you got to make it? Has to make it. Has to make it. How many times has this been made on TV? Uh, just one. Oh, my God. Eight. 200. Amaletto. Wins. Unbelievable end to this tournament. PBA well, 60 here at Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl. Congratulations, Amleto Monticelli, John Chapman, rough finish. In fact, Bo Gergen and I were talking about it today. You never know what's going to happen in bowling. You just never know. And we've seen some things here that... Finishes just surprised all of us, but uh, congratulations to you, John. Great tournament. Uh, your best finish so far, second place, and you'll be back bowling for that championship, I know. Amleto, congratulations to you. And uh, before we give all the money and the hardware away, I'd like to uh, thank the, uh, take the opportunity to thank our hosts, Wayne and Elaine Webb. Thanks so much for everything that you do. Thanks to the Carters for co-sponsoring this event, along with John, uh, I'm sorry, Gary Rollins. Gary, are you here? It's Gary Rollins here. Gary, thanks so much for, for making this event possible. We couldn't do it without you. And uh, Wayne and Elaine, if you would come out and uh, bring some money with you. I know Amleto wants some money, <laughs> and I'm sure Mariner's happy at home. And uh, Th thanks for hosting us, and uh, congratulations again, Amleto. No, uh, yeah. So stick around after the presentation. Craig Elliott is going to come out for a quick interview with the champion, and uh, Wayne and Elaine, take it away. <laughs> this was such an interesting tournament for everybody that's been here the whole week. We've lost power twice, more than that, and the bowlers have been absolutely the best you could ever be. They dealt with the situation, and the seniors are just the best of the best, and what great talent, and as you've seen today, Amaletto, incredible week, absolutely incredible week. John? So sad you didn't pull it out at the end, but uh, it was just incredible. 
great show. And I know we didn't have Bull TV for a little bit because even the internet went down. Mm. But uh, congratulations, and it's on you, pal. Okay. Well, um, like I, tell, I told Wayne, this is not the way I normally win, but this is bowling, and you know, bowling is everything. Every, anything can happen anytime. Uh, I want to thank Wayne, Elaine, for you know hosting us. This was a great week, despite you know all the troubles that we had. Uh, like you said, all the boys very, very patiently. You know, we you know we just understood that there's nothing in your control. Uh, but you know, even though I won this week, I still have a dream in my life, and it's be this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I bowl, I can remember I bowled him in Seattle, 1983. He beat me. Then he beat me in New Jersey and maybe somewhere else. So I still have that dream. And, you <laughs> think, yeah. and dreams can come true. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, only, only because we're going back in some memories. And I'm sure that you remember this because it was my last title on this regular tour, the Budweiser Bud Light Open, it, no, that was Long Island. Yes, and Amaletto needed a mark to beat me. And he was very fortunate to not mark <laughs> for my last title. And then I quit bowling. Great stories here out on the PBA 5060 tour. As you guys know, Tristan's Taps Memorial, is everything okay? Is to honor our son, Tristan Michael Ross, um, senior airman, Tristan Michael Ross. And so on behalf of all the veterans out there um, who gave it their all today, because I know there's some veterans on the PBA tour as well. So thank you for being here. God bless you. We love you. Amleto, tell your wife I miss her, and I hope to see her the next time. And uh, send me the book. He wrote a book about bowling and his dreams. Um, so thank you. Thank you for a great performance, Mr. Chapman. Thank you, sir, for a wonderful performance today. We thank you, all of you. God bless you. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring Craig Elliott out. Congratulations again, Amleto. I miss Mariner, too, by the way. And uh, <laughs> Craig, come on out and talk to the champion and see what he's thinking and what he had to do to win. Craig Elliott, everybody, from Bull TV. Amleto, I know John said it would be a quick interview, but I'm not so sure because this is our last event this year. I haven't had the opportunity to talk to you yet here in the Winter Circle, and I grew up watching you on TV. It's great to be out here talking to you. But quickly, I know it's the last event, but we're willing to stay set up. Wayne, if you want to come out here and bowl, Amleto, we'll keep it up, keep the stream going. Huh? <laughs> Maybe. As I've told to some of the greats in the past, they can't beat me. Well, hey, we tried. You, you, you still got to dream alive, Amleto. Yes, but. Yes. 11th title here on the senior tour, 20 national titles. You've been bowling for a long time. Uh, you mentioned anything can happen. We didn't expect that finish in that match. Um, but what was going through your, your mind at the end, and how's it feeling right now? Well, it was a big decision to change the ball that I've been using all basically the last couple of days and uh, had a great reaction. But I can see that ball, it was losing the energy in the back, and I wanted something that have more energy um, and had these two tracks dealt. Uh, but just uh, the length just a little different and that difference made the you know the difference between the reaction that i had before and now uh those two last shots the brooklyn and the other one just bad shots you know it's just something that you don't know where it's coming from uh i wasn't really nervous i was i knew what i needed to feel to make a good shot and it just happened um and then you know i decided okay just pick up the spare and do whatever you can do i wasn't expecting you know uh, john to do that but here i am well, let's remember the ball that he changed from. He averaged 267 with this afternoon, so yes. that's that's a pretty pretty impressive ball change. So congratulations again, yeah. Amleto. Anybody else want to thank while we're up here right now? 
I want to thank everybody, Elaine. Like I said, all the staff, all the people here, the workers, they did a great job uh, keeping up the place really nice and clean. And thank you so much. And look forward to see you next year. Awesome. Congratulations again, Amleto Monicelli. Thank you, everybody else. It's been a great year here on Bowl TV. And we'll see you all at the next stop down the road somewhere. Craig Elliott working his way back into the booth. Amaletto Monticelli, the PBA 60 Tristan <laughs> Tap Memorial Champion for his 11th PBA 50 title. The people that are here, remember, go Team Green Machine. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, Wayne, that's, that's Wayne getting, getting the, the last there. statement in. <laughs> Yeah, you know, hey, I tried for everybody out there to get one last match. You know, we just stick around, but Wayne just, you know, he said the best. You know, some people just can't be beat. Um, great ending to a great season. Um, we need to take a few minutes here again. You know, we do our normal sign-off. You know, we thank USPC, the BPWA, their board of directors, all the crew, John Weber, Linda Carter, the service player services truck, you know, Sully and Don, all those guys out there, Tom, our Bowl TV crew, you know, our fans out there, our community, want to thank all you. But honestly, it's been a great year so far. It's not over for us completely. The end of this tour, 50 tours over, 60 tours over. We'll be right. back for sure. Uh, we know in, in Las Vegas, we're on a Morse tournament. Right. And of course, there's other collegiate events coming up on Bowl TV, so don't get rid of your subscriptions yet. There's still plenty of bowling yet this year. But I just want to make sure that I thank, from the bottom of my heart, you, Tom Carter, again. We've done this. It. Thank you. We forget how many times, 40, 50, 60 times over the last, you know, 79 years. Quite a few times, <laughs> so it's always great to sit in the booth with you. Brian Kane's been a great addition to our staff to our left here. The man uh, in the truck. here on Bull TV, yep, taking care of a lot of business for us. But, uh, you know, anything can happen here on Bull TV. We just mm -hmm. saw it there in the match. I still, yeah. uh, you know. I'm still shocked at what just happened. I, happened. I mean, you thought I, off his hand it was money. Oh, I, I thought there's no way in God's green earth yeah. that he's going to split because he's not going to give up the pocket. And sure enough, he started it up a little bit too soon in the big four. It's, it, I mean, it, it's, it's heartbreaking for a lot of people here. I mean, yeah, and Leto's the, the, the crowd favorite, the Hall of Famer. But at that point. Everybody was pulling for John to get that first title, and then, you know, and then he big fours, and you know, well, you, Emlet said that's bowling. You you're know, it, you're it always wanting the underdog to win. You know, you'd like to see the guy get his first title. We all look at this back right. here. Oh no, she's <laughs> little little photo bomb here. Yeah. We well, got photo bombed. Yeah. Uh, but I was hoping John would win, I, and I'm sure Canada was wanting John to win. Oh yeah. And it, it's just unfortunate, and I still am dumbfounded to the fact that. Uh, that happened. I, I think Amaletto is more dumbfounded than anybody that he won uh, sitting on the bench. You know, it, it happens to everybody, right? You, 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 sometimes you give it to your opponent when they're on the bench, and sometimes you get the opportunity for yourself. And, hey, you're in position to win. Something has to happen. They win Amaletto's favor today to end the season. Yeah, and the way that ended, Amaletto throws a Brooklyn. You know, the strike in the ninth. Right. Misses right. the head pin in yeah, the tenth. Not totally. good shots at all. Uh, you know, the shots. last two shots. And then... Still ends up tournament champion, but like you said, and we've all said, it's bowling. Anything can happen. It's pressure. It's internal and drill, uh, adrenaline, you know, making that shot. Right. You never know what's going to happen. Well, again, thanks to all the crew out there. Mike Flanagan, it was great working with you this year. Again, Brian Kane and everybody out here. Bowl TV has uh, been around for a while, and we're here to stay. A lot of events coming up. Yeah. Thanks tell for your the friends, opportunity. Tell your family. Tom, great job again. And, uh, you know, I think it's time for us to uh, – to pack up that you go and, and head home for a while. Well, I, you know, I get to head to the parking lot. I am home. Yeah, you're not going I get, very I, far. I get to stay here. Yeah. So remember, everybody, on Bowl TV. Bowling stays here. All right. Bye for now.